In this explainer video, you'll learn about the history and basics of XAPI and XAPI data, and you'll see real-world examples of what it looks like. After watching this video, you'll be able to identify and understand key concepts and terminology. Before we get started, what should you already know? It's assumed you have a general understanding of web technologies and e-learning concepts, such as instructional content and learning management systems. First of all, XAPI is an acronym. So what does it stand for? The X stands for experience, and the API part of the acronym is also an acronym itself, which stands for Application Programming Interface. What exactly is an API? In short, it's an agreed upon way for two software applications to communicate with one another. APIs are what makes it possible to store and retrieve XAPI data in an interoperable way. XAPI also specifies a format for how its data should be structured. And XAPI is also a technical specification because it provides a suite of technical documentation for how to use the API. Technical specifications and standards are actually all around us and used in everyday life. For example, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, HTML, and USB are common technical standards used daily on our devices and computers. Whenever you use a web browser to access your favorite search engine and search for something, the HTML standard is being used by the browser to render the application and web pages. When you're connected to a wireless network at your office, home, or even when you're away from home, you're actually using a wireless network protocol standard called Wi-Fi. XAPI is transparent like these other standards. It's working behind the scenes in your products and systems. Learning technology products and services that are data-driven can now be developed more reliably because of XAPI. XAPI was designed to be content agnostic and support any type of learning experience or performance with modern technologies, such as augmented and virtual reality, mobile devices, interactive videos, and distributed simulations. If you think about it, learning happens everywhere these days. This is exactly why XAPI was created, to provide a way to capture data for any type of learning experience that can happen anywhere and anytime. XAPI data can be used to motivate learners by showing them their progress versus others. It can be used to provide insights and dashboards to instructors, coaches, or facilitators so they can help struggling learners before they fall behind. It can be used for both formative and summative assessment and feedback, providing insights about the effectiveness of the content so it can be improved over time. Now that we've covered what XAPI is and some of the big picture things it enables, Let's review how the data gets captured and stored. The primary type of XAPI data is captured and stored in the form of what's called an XAPI statement. The statement is generated by a learning record provider after an event or interaction takes place with the content. A learning record provider, or LRP, is any device or application that captures and sends XAPI data. That XAPI data is required to be stored in a learning record store, or LRS, which is the data storage and server-side component of XAPI. So what is an XAPI statement and what does it look like? An XAPI statement is quite simply just the data evidence that someone did something. It reflects a near or real-time past history of the user's activity. At a minimum, the anatomy of an XAPI statement must at least include an actor, a verb, and an object. The actor, verb, and object part of the statement looks similar to an English sentence, but represented as JSON data, which is a computer-readable format similar to other types of structured data, such as XML. The actor is the individual person or a group of people represented in a statement. The verb is the action word in a statement being performed by the actor. The object is the activity or thing being acted on in a statement by the actor. An XAPI statement can also include additional information about the context or outcome of the learning experience. Extensions can be used to provide additional information about an outcome. For example, the played segments, progress, and time spent in a video. A context extension can be used to indicate how the actor configured the video, such as closed captioning, the screen size, 
video playback dimensions, speed, and volume. Timestamp captures the statement's date and time attributes. For example, when a learner begins a video, the associated statement can include a timestamp indicating the date and time the learner started the video. Both the timestamp and stored fields are important parts of an XAPI statement. The timestamp property represents the point in time the statement was generated, whereas the stored property represents when the statement was officially stored by the LRS. In summary, you can think about XAPI statements as an official record of an outcome of what happened in a specific learning experience or situation that involves human performance. This concludes the introduction to XAPI. In this video, we covered the following key points. XAPI is a standardized format for representing and capturing learning or performance data. XAPI defines and documents an API for storing and retrieving the data. XAPI is a documented specification with technical requirements for implementation. A learning record provider, or LRP, is any device or application that captures and sends XAPI data. A learning record store, or LRS, is a data storage and server-side component for XAPI that allows data to be stored or retrieved. And XAPI statements must include an actor, verb, and object, but other optional data properties can also be included to add more context and meaning.